the Almighty. Hallelujah, glory to God, the Father, the Almighty, glory to the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. God bless you in this beautiful morning. Hallelujah. Praises and honor and glory be to the Lamb of God. Tonight, uh, today, right now, I'm on here making this video because of the video that I made last night. Um, that's for some reason nobody was able to hear the voice. So we're going to remake the same um, message. And this is, you know, for the times that we're living in. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit. I want, well, God wants me to talk today a little bit about the time of war that's also a time of embracing but we're gonna find the the word in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 8 the first eight verses but we're only gonna be focusing in on two points in them it says in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing a time to get and a time to lose a time to keep and a time to cast away a time to rent and a time to sow a time to keep silent and a time to speak a time to love and a time to hate a time of war and a time of peace Amen. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, we're going to talk about all of those times because right now in the moment that we're living in, in this time, we are experiencing all of those things. Bendito Jesus. But we're only going to elaborate on two important points, and that is the time to embrace and the time of war. Because I want to show you through the Word of God how it is that we embrace and be at war at the same time. Spiritually, we are in the greatest war maybe of our whole entire Christian lives or or if you're not a Christian, this Christians are at war, a war that they've never been in before, no, stronger than it's ever been before. But we're also in a time of embracing in our emotions, in our thoughts, in our hearts, in our minds, in, in, in the physical sense, we are in a time of embracing. But spiritually speaking, we are in a time of war. Bendito Jesus. Blessed and holy is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for these words that you give us. Your word always gives us strength. It gives us comfort. It gives us truth. It gives us understanding. And I ask of you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that every person that hears this video, that they would receive edification for their spirits. If they need correction or rebuke that it would be given to them if they need healing or deliverance so that it would be done for them that if they need salvation most importantly and above all things if they're lost that they would be saved in the name of Jesus my God there is so much power in your word and I know that the words that you give to us will not come back void and it will accomplish that which you please father I only ask that you would use this all for your glory for I'm only just an instrument and a vessel and I pray that you would guide my tongue precious Holy Spirit and that you would take complete full and dominion and do not permit anything that come out of my my mouth that is not edifying or that is not of you or that does not serve your purpose father in the name of jesus christ i give you all the thanks and the praises and the glory for you and you alone are worthy in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen i thank you for this privilege lord it's a privilege it's a privilege to, to preach the word of god ministers i know that in these times it's very hard to minister the word of god is it's not hard it's it's more difficult but you know good things don't come but easily good things come to those who pay the price for it so keep moving forward keep praying keep allowing the holy spirit to fill you with his anointing and his power so that you can be used for the glory of god in the name of jesus and you know everything has a good purpose there's a lot of bad things that people use technology for but right now in this very moment in the conditions that we're living in the situation that we are dealing with it's a very very good thing that we have social media bendito jesus because the gospel still needs to be preached amen hallelujah so I want to talk about this time of war and this time of embracing. You know, in this time, we are living in moments of devastation and despair. We are living in moments of crisis and chaos. We are living in all, in moments that maybe the most difficult moments. I've heard people that are elderly people, people that have lived a lot longer than me, for I am only 30 years old, talk about how these things, they have never seen these things go before. We're living in moments of danger. We're living in dangerous times. As the Bible warns us about, we are living 
living in the final days. Everything in the Bible is being fulfilled. We are living in it. We are experiencing it. We are seeing it with our own eyes. It's not anymore that you're just waiting to see the signs of the times. We're already experiencing the signs and the times. And now we are waiting to hear the sounds of the trumpet so that we can go and be with our Lord. Hallelujah. And that is a reason to rejoice. Even in the midst of our trials and tribulations and our despair and our crisis, we can still find comfort and peace. And we can find security in the Lord Jesus Christ in his word, in his promises. For God is not a liar. And yes, it's a time. It's a very bad, bad time. But God is still good. God still has goodness for his people. God will still do according to his will, but he will still take care of his people. He will still bless us with peace. We will still be blessed with security. We will still have joy in the midst of our deepest trials and darkest tribulations and darkest moments that we are experiencing. There is still light in Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bendito Jesus de Nazaret. Hallelujah. And it's a time of pain and it's a time of suffering and it's a time right now that we really need to be embracing one another and we really need to be showing love and compassion and care and concern for each other. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. And all these things are being fulfilled in, in, in just because we know that we are in these times of devastation. I want to warn you. I want to give a warning exhorted by the Holy Spirit to take heed when you hear them say peace and safety. For the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3 that when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them. And, and I'm saying that because there's going to be people that are going to be declaring peace and security. They're already preparing one world order and it's going to sound very good and the spirit of the Antichrist has already went out and has started moving through the world and taking over people and the Antichrist is getting ready to be revealed. The one world government, that one world order that everybody's been making movies about and talking about and warning us about it's about to take place it is biblical but that's not my message today so i will not go there but take heed to that when they start declaring peace and safety know that right now the only peace and safety that we have is in the lord jesus christ we cannot put our confidence in our governments although i do respect our governments and i pray for them deeply right now because each and one of them are going through things and they're having to make decisions that nobody really knows what they're doing or what is the right choice to make. So we have to pray for the wisdom and the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the strength of the living God for them. But we cannot put our trust in the man. The Bible clearly warns us not to put our faith in man, but to put our faith in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory a Dios. So prepare because you will start hearing this and they are going to try to bring the world together and they're going to start with these microchips and every place has already started in other places. And all of these things is predicted in the Bible. It's prophesied in the Bible and we have to be aware that when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction is going to come upon them. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and they shall not escape it. Bendito sea la gloria no matter how peaceful or secure it may seem in that moment, we are not going to escape the ones that are left behind. They're not going to escape the destruction that is going to come upon them after the rapture of the church takes place. So right now is a time, if you're not saved, to be saved. Right now is a time, if you have backslidden, to get yourself right with God. No, Mariah. No, Mommy. Not right now. Now is a time that we need to we need to really make sure that our hearts and our condition of our heart is right in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Glory a Dios. My soul praises the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we have to accept and prepare for reality. And this is not a message of doom and gloom. There's going to be a lot of promises that we're going to talk about in here that's going to strengthen and encourage your spirit. But we have to make clear, we have to call black, black, and white, white. And we have to prepare people. The truth has to be spoken so that we are prepared for it. It's written so that we have it. It's preached so that we can know it. Bendito Jesus de Nazaret. How should they hear without a preacher? Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. So we have to accept and we have to prepare for reality because, you know, there are some people, there's many Many people, including myself, sometimes if we're not watchful and prayful and we're not watching, which I am, but it's easy to just sit there and hope for the times when things will be normal again. We we cannot be um, expecting things to go back to the way they are, they were before, because they're not going to. These things are going to continue to happen, even if the coronavirus comes up with a solution. They come up with the vaccine and people start getting healed from that. Which at this point, that's not what's happening. It's getting worse and worse every day, not only in America but all over the world. Okay, but even 
even if that does happen, there's still, we are in the beginning of times. As the Bible talks about in Matthew chapter 24, we are experiencing those birth pangs. And what is about to be born is the rapture, the church, and, and the destruction, the time of Jacob's trouble that's going to come for those who are left behind. This is only the beginning of disaster and destruction and pain and suffering. But the good news is, is that we don't have to go through that if we're in Christ. If we are believing in Jesus Christ, then this is good news for us, church. Because why? Because Jesus Christ is coming back for his church. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praises to the Lamb of God. We're going to go to a kingdom where there's no more pain and there's no more suffering and he's going to wipe all the tears away from our eyes and we're going to rule and we're going to reign with the Lord. And that is a reason to rejoice. There is a reason to rejoice in Jesus Christ. We have a greater hope, the hope of glory, our eternal life, our salvation in Jesus Christ and those streets of gold and those seas of glass. It's no reason to be depressed. It's no reason to be down. It's only a reason to be strong in the faith and maintain yourself in prayer so that you can be right with God and be sure and secure your salvation. Hallelujah. Not that we secure, but God secures it in us, but we do have a price to pay. We have to be watchful. We have to be prayerful. We have to be discerning. We have to be seeking the Lord with all of our hearts and make sure that our hearts, whatever is in our heart, is right with God. Because at this point, it doesn't matter what we did. It doesn't matter how much we served. It doesn't matter how much we preached. It doesn't matter what you're used for. The only thing that matters in the day that we take our last breath or that Jesus Christ comes back at the sound of that trumpet is that our hearts are right with God in that moment. That our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. For He is the only way to salvation. For He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man shall come unto me except through me. No man shall come unto the Father except through me, said Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. All these things that we are experiencing here are temporal. They're they're not eternal. And, and we need to keep our eyes focused on the things that are promised, not on the things that are wanted. We need to keep our eyes focused on the things above, not on the things of this earth. We need to keep our eyes and find our security in Jesus Christ and not in the things and the people of this earth, especially brothers and sisters. Lord, we don't even know. We don't know the things that God has prepared for for those who love him. We can't even imagine. We have a little glimpse of heaven in the New Jerusalem written in the Bible, especially in the book of Revelations. We get a little bit of a peek and God reveals to us just a little bit, but we cannot understand or know those things that God has prepared for those who love him. All we have to worry about right now is loving God and loving other people and embracing each other. Like I told you, we're going to talk about today the time of embracing. It's not a time of war in the flesh. Okay, bendito Jesus. And as before I get into this, as a time of embracing, it's a time to show compassion. It's a time to show forgiveness. It's a time to show care and concern, to be more concerned about others than ourselves as the Bible teaches us to do that. Bendito sea la gloria de Jesus, to pray for one another, to pray for the saints, to pray for the lost. But there's one thing that really has been bugging me and it's really been setting deep into my heart and I want to just take it out there and call black, black and white, white. If we are not staying home and we are not being respectful to the authorities in their prayers and petitions, not that they have to really, really ask because because they have authority and that authority comes from the Lord but they're begging people to stay home you have um, soldiers making live videos, um, you know, expressing their feelings about having to um, collect all these dead bodies to get rid of them because people are dying every day. It's a very serious thing. This is not a joke. And the authorities are begging us to stay home. And there's still all this chaos out there. People fighting against authorities, people being disrespectful. And what's breaking me is not because that's expected of the world. That's expected. Ignorance is expected from those who are ignorant. But it's not expected from the church. We are supposed to be demonstrations of love. We are supposed to be demonstrations of obedience. We are supposed to be demonstrations of selflessness and care and concern for other people. And how can we sit there and say that we love others and we love God if we cannot even obey the authority to come home? Because, you know, there's some people that are proclaiming power and authority in their faith in Jesus Christ. And they're saying, you know, pretty much that they're untouchable, that I believe in Jesus and I'm not going to get sick. And, well, let me tell you something. First of all, none of us are immune because if God allowed this, it's according to his purpose, number one. And number two, besides that it's not demonstrating care or concern for other people. Why? Because it's amen. If you're covered in the blood of Jesus, amen. If you're saved and no poison can touch you, amen. But what about the people that are not? Do you know that according to the medical professionals and many people have already revealed to us that you can be infected, you can be sick, you can be carrying the infection and not even know it, not have any symptoms and be passing it to other people? Blessed and holy is the Lamb of God. And that is the scary part. You see, it's not only about you. It doesn't demonstrate power and authority when you're number one disrespectful to the authorities but number two unconcerning and uncompassionate towards other people that you're putting them at risk 
how let's look at Titus chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 it says put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers meaning our authorities and to obey the magistrates to be ready to do every good work to speak evil of no man to be no brothers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men to be to be to speak evil of no man and be gentle. All these people that are speaking against Donald Trump, and I'm not saying that I agree with everything with him, but you have to put yourself in his shoes and understand that he is only a man trying to satisfy the needs of millions of people. And, and all the other authorities across the face of this earth are only trying to do whatever they know how they to do humanly possibly. They're trying to make an organization. They're trying to come together to get this disease under control. And us being rebellious and uncooperative is not demonstrating the love or the selflessness of Jesus Christ. Hey, we cannot be, uh, you know, proclaiming ourselves to be ministers of Jesus Christ if we're not ambassadors of Jesus Christ, if we're not demonstrating Jesus Christ, if our actions are not speaking louder than our words. How can we teach people how to be obedient if we're not being obedient ourselves? How can we lead people to do what they're supposed to be doing when we're not doing it ourselves? Excuse my daughter in the background. Bendito Jesus, aleluya. She's, um, she's a little bit impatient, but we're going to continue with the word of God. Amen. Bendito Jesus, aleluya. Oh, santo. Santo, 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 Santo. We have to be demonstrations. So like I'm saying that this is in time of embracing. It's a time to show love and compassion and concern and care for other people. Yes, it is a time for us right now to cherish every precious moment that we have with our children, that we have with our husbands and our wives. It's a time to pick up the phone and call each other, call our family members that are lost, or just call them to tell them how much you love them and appreciate them and share the good memories that you had with one another and hold those dearly in your heart. It's a time to embrace. Maybe we can't embrace some people people physically right now, but we are able to embrace them with our emotions. We are able to embrace them with words of encouragement. We are able to embrace them. And right now we need to be embracing God as we never have embraced him before. We need to be holding so tightly to God and getting so close to God in prayers and fastings in his word and studying of his word and listening to his word. We need to be getting closer to the Lord now more than ever in our lives. Bendito Jesus. It's a time of embracing, but it's also a time of war. It's a time of war. What kind of war I'm talking about? I'm talking about a spiritual battle, such a strong spiritual battle that is going on that is so strong. It's never have been before in the experience in the life of a Christian. We are fighting against principalities and spiritual wickedness and demons in high places. And the war is strong. The battle is strong. And God has called warriors. He has called soldiers. He has given us a spirit of love and self-control and a sound mind, a spirit of strength and courage and not of weakness and not of cowardice. Bendito sea la gloria de Jesús. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 6 and some people get very uncomfortable some people even Christians get very uncomfortable when you start talking about the war that is going on when you start talking about um about spiritual warfare and you start revealing the enemy they don't like to talk about the say about Satan Jehovah reprende Satanás en el nombre de Jesús they don't like it and they don't like to talk about demons and they don't like to talk about these things but let me tell you something every soldier when they go to war they know who is their enemy they know what they're coming up against they studied them they get as much information as they possibly can so that way they know how and what they have to use to fight against them so it's necessary to speak about it bendito sea la gloria de Jesús it's necessary to know who our opponent is that's why Joshua in the book of Joshua chapter 2 when they were going into the promised land they saw themselves as grasshoppers in their own eyes they were living in fear because they knew that the people that were already there in the promised land in the land of Canaan that they were they, they were much bigger than them and they had the perception that bigger meant stronger and they sent spies out into the land to see what they were coming up against and not only in, in the Bible times did they do this right now whenever we go to war if you talk to any soldier they'll tell you that they get as much information about their opponent about the country that they're going to war and the soldiers that they're coming up against before they go and they do that so it is necessary whether we like it or not whether it makes you comfortable or uncomfortable it doesn't change the fact it doesn't change the reality demons are very real satan is very real he's not just a little um creature with horns on his head and a big long tail walking around no he's a real powerful being he's a real powerful spirit and we have no chance against him if we do not know what what weapons 
we have and how it is that we are to fight against them. He's like an angel of the light. He doesn't come to you in that way. He's very strategic. He watches you. He waits to see in which way he can take you down. He watches for your weaknesses. He watches you when you're most vulnerable and most emotional, which is right now in this moment of devastation. He's coming in like a roaring lion. He's seeking to attack and waiting to seek whom he may devour because he's watching and waiting for that moment of vulnerability. And he already knows your weaknesses because he has been wise and he has been smart and he has been watching you. The Bible teaches us that he's wise. I'm not going to get into all that, but it does even from the Old Testament, it teaches us that he was very wise. Okay. He comes like an angel of the light. He knows what you like. He knows how to tempt you. He knows how to play with your mind. And he knows when you're already depressed and you're already sad, how to keep throwing salt on that wound, how to keep throwing sticks on the fire. He knows how to get you. So do you know how to respond to him? Do you know what weapons you have to counteract those attacks? Look at, look at Ephesians chapter 6. It says in verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It tells us what we are up against. And not only does it tell us what we're up against, if you continue to read verse 13 to 17, it tells you what weapons you have to fight against him. Wherefore, therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins skirt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness we live in holiness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith be strong in your faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereon too with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints we have our weapons in prayer we have our weapons in the word of God. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. As I told you, I think it was in the last video when Jesus himself came to the earth as a man and he, after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and he was up against Satan and Satan tempted him three times, he constantly replied and battled with the word of God saying it is written. That is in Matthew chapter 10. You can read the beginning of the chapter and you will see that text in there where he constantly said every temptation it is written, it is written, it is written and he used scripture. We need to be in the same way. We need to be grounded in the same mind. We need to be renewing ourselves daily in the word of God so that when we need to have that weapon against the enemy, when the weapon when the enemy comes to attack us and comes in like a flood that we're able to retaliate and we're able to fight we're not fighting against flesh and blood we're not fighting against each other and it's sad that even in these moments of devastation people are still fighting people are still holding resentments people are still throwing things up from the past in each other's faces my brothers and sisters and people out there people of god and people in the world it is not time for that it is time for embracing it's time for love it's time to appreciate the people that you have for i have people requesting prayer petition of people you know that they didn't maybe get a chance to make amends with or they have just made amends with them because they are now dying it's not time for that people are dying every day it's time to let go of the past let bygones be bygones let go of the resentments let go of the bitterness let go of the anger you know when you stay angry at somebody it hurts you more than it hurts them that bitterness, that anger in your soul is like a deadly poison. And with it, that deadly poison in your soul, you'll start speaking things out of your mouth which you ought not to speak. Things that will only cause destruction in your own life because the power of life and death is in our tongues. Bendito sea la gloria de Jesús, say the Bible in the book of Proverbs. Now I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We have to bring into captivity every thought. We have many negative thoughts and many voices in our minds every day to the obedience of Christ. And how do we do that? By grounding ourselves in the word of God, by filling ourselves with listening to preachings that edify preachers that you know are preaching the word of God biblically in spirit and truth, by reading the Bible by yourself, by praying and meditating over the word of God, your mind and your heart will be grounded. So that way when the enemy uses people and he will use that of your own household, Jesus said in Matthew 
chapter 10, verse 36, that your own enemies will be that of your own household. And when they come in, that you will not respond to that in the flesh, that you'll respond to it with the word of God, that you'll know how to react in the moment when the enemy is trying to cause strife in your home. He's trying to divide the marriages. He's trying to divide the children from the parents and the parents for the children. He knows what he's doing, especially now that we're quarantined and we're in our own houses. He's trying to cause strife in the home. And if you have strife in your home, there's no way that you can have peace or the presence of God in your home. So he's working really hard for that. But sometimes we just need to learn how to stay quiet and pray. Or if we're going to respond, we need to respond with the word of God, not in a way of selfishness, not in a way that is being used for our own gain or trying to make people feel bad according to the word of God, but to use it in a way that edifies, to use it in a way that lifts up the house and builds up the house and not in a way that tears it down in the name of Jesus. Bendito sea la glory. But if you're not grounded in the word of God, if your sword is not sharpened, if your weapons are not prepared and you're not wearing the armor and you're not strong in your faith and you now have that blessed period of truth and righteousness on you you're not going to be able to respond in that manner and you're not going to stand any chance in this war. We are warring so strong right now. It is time to fight in the spirit. It is time to embrace in emotions and embrace physically and embrace one another and embrace God but it's time to fight in the spirit. We are at war, brothers and sisters. Do not be deceived. Do not sit there and sit back and take it easy and think, well, all I have to do is just spend time with my family and wait for this quarantine to pass and wait for everything to get normal again. You don't know what is normal. We know not what what holds tomorrow. We don't know if we'll ever go back to work in the way that we know it or school in the way that we know it. We don't know if we'll ever go on those missionary trips or those vocations. We don't know if those of us who are not married will ever be married. We don't know if we're ever going to go to college. We don't know all these things that we're hoping for and expecting and wanting. We don't know if they're going to come to pass, but we do know that there is a kingdom waiting for us. We do know that there is a Lord and Savior that loves us. We do know that we have a place in heaven when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We do know that God is merciful. We do know that his promises are true let's put our eyes on reality and reality is the truth that we have in Jesus Christ and everything else is just a hope Bendito sea la gloria de Jesus. Keep our eyes on the things that are eternal and not on the things that are temporal. And even if Christ doesn't come in this lifetime and you continue to suffer in the pain and destruction and the birth pains, you're still going to take your last breath one day. I always go over this every time I get the messages because it's time for people to destroy that reality in their minds, which is only a delusion that they're going to live forever because we're not. Each and one of us have an appointed time for every man is appointed to die once and after that cometh the judgment. There is a time that we are going to have to stand face to face with our creator and we're going to have to give an account for our lives for the words we spoke out of our mouth and the things that we chose to do with our lives the things that we chose to do with our children the example that we chose to give in this life we are going to be held accountable and the good news is if you're in Christ Jesus you're justified so that when the father looks at you all he sees is his son Jesus Christ who shed his blood on the cross of Calvary and he doesn't see that that dirty low down broken up sinner that terrible person he sees his son he sees the Lord Jesus Christ he sees you washed whiter than snow and he sees you in those white robes bendito sea la glory but it's time to take care of our garments it's time to prepare and make sure that we are covered in that blood and that we are really walking and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Bendito sea la gloria de Jesucristo. My dear brothers and sisters, it is not a time to play. The devil is not playing. It is time for war. It is time for prayer and fasting. It is time for fighting in the spirit. And if you're not able to fast because you have different medical conditions, maybe diabetes or low blood sugar and all these other things, it's a time for prayer. It's not a time for fighting. It's not a time for TV. It's not a time for all that. And I'm not saying that you can't watch any TV in your house, but I'm just saying that if you're sitting there watching the day past watching the news and watching the TV and watching movies and watching this and that and just waiting for things to go back to normal taking into consideration that you do not know what tomorrow holds. You do not know the moment or the hour. Not even the angels of God, not even the Son himself knows the moment or the hours but only the Father but Christ will come again. Christ is coming again. It is a time for spiritual warfare. It is a time to be watchful. It is a time to be prayful. It's a time to set our eyes on the things above. It's a time to embrace and it's a time to war. Bendito sea la gloria. Warring in the spirit embracing in the humanity bendito sea la gloria de Jesucristo blessed and holy is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world hallelujah I thank you for giving me the time to speak into your lives allowing God to use me as an instrument and I thank you for listening and I and I and I thank you for even those who are um, making prayer requests I love to pray for you um, please keep praying for me keep praying for my family keep praying for my mom who's in a nursing home for the God's protection to be over her keep praying let's keep praying for one for another and let's keep being watchful and prayful amen god bless you jesus loves you lose lose all the doubts and the fears and put your hope and your faith in your eyes in jesus christ because he is the only truth and the only security that we have in these moments
Amen. Father, in the name of the all-powerful Jesus Christ, I pray that you would use this word for your glory, that you would bless every single listener, that you would fill them with your presence and your peace, my God, and that you would glorify yourself in the name of Jesus, my God. We love you, we praise you, we thank you, and we say these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost of God. I thank you for this word. Amen.